something we also talked about discussing, which was the, the continual drain from the church, the Catholic Church, perhaps in particular, but perhaps not in the West, of young people. Um, and I think part of that is their inability to make intellectual sense of, of everything that they're faced with, a religious tradition and a scientific tradition, especially on the biological front, but not only that, they don't know where to place these things in their in their view of the world. I think that's partly why my lectures, because you'd asked yes. about that, had become popular, because I am trying to do that. And No, I'll say this. You look at the surveys. There's a lot of surveys now that ask young people precisely that question, how come you left? And people speculate, oh, it must be because of the scandals or because, you know, they had a bad experience in church or something. Number one reason across many years in all the surveys is I don't believe the teachings. And then to specify that, religion and science seem to be at odds with each other. So for young people, the scientific way of knowing is the way of knowing. So it's sort of scientism, at least implicitly, holds sway in the minds of a lot of young people. So once you make that move, knowledge equals the scientific manner of knowing. Well, then the Bible is non-scientific, therefore it's, you know, old superstition, Bronze Age mythology, etc. And see, what you were doing, Jordan, I think, you were doing what a lot of the church fathers did with the scriptures, because the church fathers are very interesting. People like Origen and Augustine and Chrysostom and those people, they knew fully well in the third and fourth century that the Bible should not simply be read in a sort of, you know, a straightforwardly literalistic way. Augustine knew that very clearly. Origen knew that clearly. And they talked, therefore, about the different senses of scripture. What you're doing, I think, in a lot of your lectures is what Origen would have called the moral sense of the Bible the tropological, to give it its kind of technical term. The biblical texts are about the moral life. Now, we might say today the psychological life or what makes you psychologically healthier or more productive. They would have said the moral sense. They knew all about that. And so the texts begin to open up in these marvelous ways. So, you know, Noah and the ark, Jacob and, and wrestling with the angel and, and the ladder going up to heaven, et cetera, et cetera. If you start fussing about, um, you know, the literal truth of these stories, you're going to miss these really deep spiritual insights, which the church fathers knew very well. And I think you were in your own way tapping into that. And the fact that young people were responding to it, see, I think is very encouraging. That's why I told the bishops, it's a, it's a positive sign that you were getting the audiences you were getting around this. Well, the problem with the scientific viewpoint, technically speaking, is that it's amoral within, it, within, it, within its own Within its, within its own confines, by, by definition, it strives not to address issues of value. Now, it can't help it because scientists have to investigate some things and not others, so value enters into it. But by its own nature, science can't answer or, and tries not to answer questions of value. Now, it gets more complicated when you look at um, work like the primatology I discussed earlier, the origin of morality in animals and game playing, say, among rats, that starts to move into the domain of morality to some degree. But the problem with science is that it doesn't, it strips out all subjective meaning. It's designed to do that. And that leaves everyone at a loss about what to do with the world of value. And I do believe that um, stories in particular, uh, address the world of value. That's their function. That's And, and the world of value is the world that that we act in, it, it, they're guides to action. 